Attention that my last video applying an engraved pattern to a cut shape got cut off right before the good part. So we're gonna start from scratch here, do this again um, and show you how to create a simple pattern uh, and then make sure that it crops out to the line uh, to the outline of a shape. Unfortunately, with the Glowforge, uh, it doesn't really recognize clipping masks, which is the simple <laughs> technique we would normally use. Um, you can technically do a clipping mask and then just come up to um, object rasterize and it'll work, but it doesn't work quite the same way. So we're going to show you, a or I'm going to show you a different technique real quick. We're going to start off with, um, first of all, we're going to set up our canvas because for this, I want my shapes to be evenly spaced and all that. So we're going to come up to view show grid and we're also going to go up to view snap to grid and that just uh, controls how your shapes can move and makes kind of nudges them into the right position um, so that you in this case we're doing stripes uh, so that your stripes are evenly spaced so I'm gonna zoom into my canvas a bit just so that I can get it uh, I don't know I just like to see it bigger okay so I went over here to my rectangle tool and it's possible that yours might be stuck on a line segment tool or a different one so just click it these options will come out and you've got your rectangle tool so I'm gonna just start up here you'll see these darker lines every inch okay so the dark square is uh, one square inch all right so I'm gonna come to the start of an inch I'm gonna do a four inch wide pattern and you see how it doesn't let me um, make my shape in between these little eighth inch marks right and I want that for this project it's not appropriate for every project it will be irritating if you leave your snap to grid on when uh, you're working on something else so um, you can always go up and just turn it off by clicking the same thing okay so we have one stripe here and it's four inches wide and it's one eighth of an inch uh, tall long tall uh, so we have that now you can certainly keep making them this way and do it that way that's fine uh, but you can also click your selection tool here come here uh, just select both of those you can also hit command a to select all copy either by command C on a Mac or edit copy and then paste with command V or edit paste okay but you see it's not in the right spot all right, no worries. As long as you have it clicked off of it, both items will still be selected. If you have clicked off of it, just click and drag to select and just move it into place. And now, again, you can, you could just recopy the, or sorry, repaste those two. Um, but I like to save myself time. I'm going to select all six, copy, paste, zoom out a little so that I can see more. And look, we've got this big pattern already with very little effort. I want to draw your attention. Uh, before we continue to our um, shape attributes all right you want to make sure that you have a fill but no stroke all right because remember that in the glowforge user interface a fill engraves a stroke cuts or scores and we don't want cuts or scores right now we just want the engrave we will worry about the cut line in just a minute all right and i'm probably just i don't need a whole nother set of that i just need another what six or so so and I'm just using my arrow key to move it down so that I can grab it without grabbing the rest all right so we have a little stripey area here uh, that's as big as I need for my silhouette shape that I'm going to apply here I would like to um, cut a silhouette that has a stripey pattern engraved on the back without wasting a bunch of material so I'm coming over here where I have my shape SVG already open in Illustrator Okay, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna paste it. Okay, now you see it's huge, but I actually don't want it to be that big, I want it to be quite small. So I'm gonna resize by clicking one of these little squares. Okay, you can click any of them, um, as long as you've got these little double-headed arrows that pop up. Now I wanna preserve those proportions, so I'm gonna shift click instead of just click. So let me just show you what happens if you don't do that. Um, let's say that I just uh, clicked. Now you see how the shape is um, squished down. We don't want that. I see, uh, again, I see a lot of that with, uh, especially text resizing. People forget to shift click, which makes it all, um, all the proportions are preserved. All right, so now we wanna place our shape on the pattern and you wanna pay attention to where your pattern is going to lie, okay? Uh, for me, I do not want this bottom piece to be not engraved. So I like to have 
I like to arrange it to where there's a little bit of engrave at the top and a tiny bit of engrave at the bottom. And you'll see that my shape is not really the right size for that. So I'm gonna resize again, shift click just a smidge. And then I'm going to come up and turn off my snap to grid so I can just scooch it a little. And now I like my placement. I don't need to worry about the horizontal placement since these are stripes and it's the same all the way across. Okay, um, before we continue, I should have done this before, but before we continue, we're gonna come and select all of the stripes only. And I did that by just kind of selecting and making sure I didn't run over this um, shape at all. I just did it on the very edge, okay? Um, and then you can group them so that it all acts like one shape. So now if I click one stripe, all of them are selected. If I click and move one stripe, they're all selected. Um, okay, so those are grouped, so it's gonna act like one little uh, like one one cohesive pattern instead of however many stripes we have there. Now, I am going to copy this silhouette outline for later, okay? Uh, I'm also going to switch the attributes here. It's a stroke right now, and normally that's good. We want that because we it, it, in the end, we want it to cut out. But for now, we wanna make it a fill just so that we can crop appropriately. All right, so you have our fill. We have our back layer. You do wanna make sure that this shape is on top. So if it's not, or if you're not 100% sure, maybe you copy pasted some stripes afterwards or whatever, uh, select it, go to object, arrange, bring to front, and now you're sure that there's no other things that are in front of it, and that's important. Now you wanna click and drag just to make sure that you're selecting everything, okay? And you are gonna come up here to your Pathfinders panel. So if you're on properties or something, click here for Pathfinder. And choose crop all right so now it's cropped to your proper shape all right so you'll see that there's no stroke around that edge in other words it's not going to cut out it's just going to engrave so what we want to do now is come up to edit paste in place because you copied that outline earlier okay and now it's perfectly in place. It will engrave your stripes. It will um, cut your cut line, cut your outline here. Um, make sure that these two, that, that your engrave and your cut are two different colors. It doesn't have to be black and red. That's just what I always use. And I just wanna zoom in a little bit to show you that yes, it is right up against it. Okay, so you're not gonna run into you know a gap between your cut and your engrave. Now, let's say that you forgot to um, edit paste in place and you just pasted it wherever it naturally fell okay fine no worries what you can do is click and drag to select both come on up to object align you'll want to do horizontal align center and see how it lined that, those up and then you want to go to object align vertical align center and that gets it all lined up again Okay, so maybe you're not doing a silhouette or maybe you are and you just wanna add something on top. Maybe you're doing a sign with an engraved background. You can cut out letters to put on top or you can even uh, create something else. So this is a silhouette of my daughter Freya, so I'm gonna use her name here. So I'm gonna type Freya. I'm gonna come on up and choose, hmm, let's do a bolder uh, font here. I clicked the select tool here so that I can resize it easily. Uh, you can resize it using these numbers too, that's fine. Um, or shift, click, and drag, all right? So that's fine, I like that. We're going to uh, right click, create outlines. You always wanna do that, uh, otherwise your text will not show up in the Glowforge. And just out of habit, you don't need to for a, um, a non-script font, but just out of habit, you wanna get into the habit of Pathfinder Unite, okay? Um, and since I want this to engrave uh, more deeply than my red, more deeply than my stripes so that it stands out, I'm gonna assign it a different color. And that way I can set different settings for it in the Glowforge interface. Now this is looking super Christmassy, um, but remember it's not gonna turn out red and green on your final product. All right, so I want it somewhere in here, um, but I wanna make sure that it's pretty centered. So we can just select all of this object align horizontal align center and see how it nudged it over and again this is looking like a candy cane and like santa claus um threw up here so uh feel free to choose whatever colors make things um look right for you all right but at this point again you can um 
set different settings for all of these so you'll set this black stroke to cut you'll set this engrave this red engrave to one uh, engrave setting and you'll set this uh, green letters uh, this green engrave to a deeper engrave setting so you have a lot of freedom here with playing around with stuff uh, we can talk glowforge settings later if you're interested in that okay so at this point you've got your completed file you're gonna go file save as name it whatever you want and then come on down to this SVG all right and then you're gonna hit save and you're gonna hit okay now, I actually don't want to save that with an untitled thing it'll mess up my system so I'm not gonna do it let me know if you have any questions and um, I want to just reiterate here you don't have to do stripes in a silhouette get creative you can do um, uh, I had somebody who did a botanical uh, no, uh, a dream catcher pattern on the on the background of a painted sign very cool she added a name on top it was lovely um, you can do whatever all right 